Today with Mr. Williams, we are going to be making vegetable fajitas. I've already preheated my oven to 180 degrees. I've made sure I've got my scraps tray just to my right and my vegetable tray to my left. I'm now chopping and peeling my red onions, making sure that I get the skin off them and I'm just tidying up as I go along, putting any rubbish into my rubbish box there. From there, I slice up my onions into rings. I'm slicing up two red onions, depending on how many people you've got. You could use more or less. Slicing those up neatly into rings and making sure that I use my knuckle as a guard so I don't cut my hands with my knife. I then place all of my rings when I've chopped them up into my roasting tray ready to go. Next up is the pepper. First off, I remove the stalk, makes it much easier for me to chop it. Then I chop off the very bottom, like so, just where it starts to curve. And I repeat the exact same thing at the very top, so I'm left with a cylinder of pepper. I then just make sure that I'm neatening up my workboard as I go and looking at the pepper we can see that there's these seeds and this membrane in the middle that I don't want. First thing I'm going to do is just slice down the side but not all the way in. That enables me to open up the pepper. Then I chop it in half just down the middle and cutting away from me to make sure that the knife is safe I then chop away this white membrane. Because I've kept the membrane intact it means I'm not going to be sweeping up as many seeds as I would be if I chopped up the pepper another way. Again, just chopping away from me and being very careful with my knife. This way I've got two nice almost sheets of pepper that I'm now going to chop up. I'm trying not to waste anything so I'm going to slice up into smaller pieces this bit of the top of the pepper, just leaving this very green bit that I don't really want. And now I move on to slicing up my bigger bits of pepper. I take this and I place it skin side down because this gives me a nicer cutting area and now I just chop the pepper into ribbons. I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping my chopping board nice and clear as well so I'm not taking up too much space. And I'll chop this now as you can see into ribbons again using my knuckles where appropriate as a guard. Moving on now to my mushrooms, having washed them thoroughly I chop off the ends, you don't have to but this is something that I do and then I slice them into four roughly evenly sized slices. I repeat this with all of them. Now I move on to my garlic. I'm not going to be chopping the garlic too much. What I am going to do is slice the bulb in half and leave it at the side. I'm then going to give my vegetables a mix through, add in some olive oil to help them colour, and then continuing to season with a bit of salt and a little bit of pepper before I move on to my spices. First off, I add some cumin. I'm using about two teaspoons here worth of cumin. Then I follow that up with two teaspoons of smoked paprika. Again, if you like it spicy, you can definitely add more. I then add in one teaspoon of oregano. I'm also adding in roughly four teaspoons of chili flakes. Again, you can definitely add in more if you like it spicier or less if you don't want it quite as spicy. Now I'm giving everything a mix through. I'm using a spoon because I've got lots of spice in there and I don't want to use my hands in case I touch my eyes and that hurts. Finally, I add in the garlic. The garlic is still in its skin, so it's going to roast with the vegetables and become really sweet. And that goes into the oven for about 20 minutes to half an hour, again at 180 degrees. I can now start on the first of my sauces, which is a tzatziki. This is not really traditional with fajitas, but I really like it. I start off by peeling a cucumber. This for me makes the dip taste look a little bit nicer. Instead of throwing away those cucumber peelings though, I can put them in a water later. I then slice the cucumber in half and I'm using a whole cucumber for this and then de-seed it by just taking a spoon and scooping out those seeds. Again, they can go into water. I then chop my cucumber up into little batons and then go back over it, chopping it up into small little cubes. And I do that with the second piece. If I want to, I can leave it like that or I can run a knife over it like so just to chop it up that little bit finer. It's entirely up to you though whether you want a chunky texture or a smoother texture. Up next I'm chopping up my coriander. I'm just getting rid of the very smaller stems at the end. I then bunch that up and chop that down. I really like coriander so I'm using quite a lot but some people don't. To some people it tastes like soap so if you don't like it leave it out. Again I'm going back over it with my knife as you can see here and this is something that I do want to be really fine. What I'm looking for is a nice even amount of coriander flavour going out through my sauce and not having big bits of coriander that I have to pick out my teeth later. And you can see here having sped up my knife skills, I've now chopped it up super fine. I now scoop that up and put that in with my cucumber and now move on to my yoghurt. 
I've now put my mixture on a set of scales. I've set it to zero and now I'm adding in the yogurt. This works out about 200 grams or roughly eight tablespoons of yogurt. Taking it all off the scale, you then mix it together and then add in some salt and some pepper, making sure to check it for seasoning. Having done that, I then make sure that I've changed my spoon over and then mix through thoroughly to combine and that's how I've made my tzatziki sauce. Up next is the avocado crema. First of all, I chop around the edge of the avocado to open it up. Carefully remove the stone from the avocado and then begin removing the flesh from the skin. You can either use a spoon to scoop it out or chop it into quarters and then peel the skin off from the outside. Then you finally chop the pieces of avocado by slicing them lengthways and then across again. This will make it much easier to blend into the yogurt later on. You can see now that I am slowly chopping them down and again using the rocking knife motion just to get them nice and fine. Next, I'm going to add in some lime. I first roll it because this helps to release the juices. I then chop the lime in half. You then chop the lime into quarters and then use the juice of half a lime. Squeeze that all over the avocado. I'm now preparing the garlic for the avocado. I chop off the flat end of the garlic and then using the flat part of my knife, I crush the garlic clove. This makes it really easy to remove the skin from it as you're about to see. So you've got this lovely flattened bit of garlic, you just pick the bits of skin out and put them in the bin. That then means that you're then able to run your knife over the garlic and chop that up really fine. And you want to make sure that you can get this as fine as is possible to give it a really nice garlicky flavor throughout the whole of the avocado crema. Then you need to add in 150 milliliters of yogurt or roughly six tablespoons, and then start mashing that together with a fork. Truthfully, that was taking ages, so I put it in a blender, and so then it will come out super smooth like this. On now to our final sauce, which is a tomato salsa. Start by slicing your tomatoes in half, and then by slicing them into quarters again. Repeat this for all of your tomatoes and place them in a bowl when they're done. Then you're going to finely slice a red onion. Do this having peeled it in the way that we showed you earlier by slicing down along the top, like so, making sure to leave one end of it intact. And then cut your knife through the onion, like so. Again, not going all the way to the end and being careful for fingers. And then as finely as you can using your knuckle as a guard, slice down the onion and this will give you really small, really fine pieces of onion that you then add to your tomato. When you get to the end bit, just finely chop it like so. Up next, coriander. We're going to chop this the exact same way as we did before. I've already removed the stalks. I'm using a lot of coriander again because I really like it. I then run my knife over it like so in that rocking motion. Again, this gets the coriander really lovely and fine. I've also rotated the chopping board just to speed that up and then I add it in. I've added in a pinch of chili because again, I like it a bit spicy. I've added in a bit of salt and a little bit of pepper as well, just to check for seasoning. I then mix that together with a fork. We're now ready to just get ourselves set up for making the wraps. First off, I'm just slicing some limes into quarters in case I want to squeeze them over and quickly chopping some coriander to add in as well. And finally, I'm just gonna grate a little bit of cheese. Not necessarily traditional, but it does taste delicious. I've used a cheddar. Now fully onto the assembly, I add small amounts of everything onto my wrap and I'm doing it in the middle and I'm trying to arrange it in a line because this will make it much easier for me to wrap it. Make sure you get a nice portion of vegetables on there as well before adding in any extra things like lime, coriander or cheese. Next is the tricky bit, which is actually the business of folding it. What you want to do is lift two sides so they're touching, rotate it round, flipping up one side and then pushing it so it rolls all the way round until you get this nice, neat little package. If you're making these for lunch, you could chop them in half or leave them whole. It's entirely up to you. And that is how you could make vegetable fajitas.